This morning, I'm very pleased to have an opportunity to talk with a new member of our faculty at McCourt, Sebastian Yilka, who is um, joining us this fall as an associate professor of public policy um, at the McCourt School. And um, Sebastian comes to McCourt um, by way of a fellowship at the Office of Evaluation Sciences at the General Services Administration. So we'll have a chance to talk a little bit about that. But he brings with him a, a very distinguished record of research where he applies insights from behavioral sciences to public management and policy to study how government reforms affect public employees and the people they serve, especially with regard to social equality and access to public services and programs. Sebastian also works with public organizations in the U.S. and internationally to design and apply behavioral interventions to improve government um, effectiveness across domains. He has received the Beryl Radin Award for Best Article Published in the Journal of Public Administration Research and Theory, which is an award close to our heart given Professor Radin's um, long association with the McCourt School. He is also co-editor of Experiments in Public Management Research, Challenges and Contributions that was recently published by Cambridge University Press and a founding editor of the Journal of Behavioral Public Administration, a not-for-profit open access journal. Sebastian was born in Germany, received his master's in public administration um, from Zeppelin University in Germany and his PhD from Erasmus University in the Netherlands. So we're very pleased to have him join us here at the McCord School. So Sebastian, um, at a high level, your research applies insights from behavioral sciences to public administration. Um, you've published several papers, including one about discrimination and administrative burdens in public service uh, markets. Can you share a little more about your work and what inspires you to pursue this field of study? Sure. So first of all, thank you for the uh, for the lovely introduction, Maria. That was very very kind words. Um, yeah. So broadly speaking, my my research actually comes from is, is is very mundanely motivated and comes from the fact that as a as a as a PhD student, I started to to read popular science books like like Nudge and and Dishonesty, um, kind of books that grew out of the behavioral movement um, um, in psychology, but also in, in economics and kind of thought for myself, like there must be a place for this type of research in public management, because we are often looking at organizations and institutions at the meso and at the macro level, but these, these, these um, meso macro level factors actually ought to shape human behavior, which is kind of the, the unit of analysis that I'm interested in. So kind of um, um, that was kind of more of, of that's kind of a more mundane motivation I, I, I had. Um, with the study you talked about um, on, on, on discrimination, social service, um, the story behind that study is actually my wife um, used to help immigrants in Germany kind of to reintegrate. So my wife is, is born Ethiopian, speaks obviously the, the native language, which is Amharic, and she worked with one um, lady and they went together to a kindergarten and in that kindergarten they told her very bluntly that they are required to take her in but they don't want to because she doesn't speak the language and she would always require a translator right and that led me to go back to the classical um, um, writings of, of Lipsky on street level bureaucracy and, and the notion of cream skimming and um, having having read um, famous audit studies on, on um, where you send out CVs, where you randomly vary the sender that signals the race or uh, ethnicity of, of the sender of the CV and how that affects callback rates for jobs. I kind of thought of a way to apply that for social services. Um, we ended up implementing that study in Belgium for elderly care, um, simply because elderly care nicely has different institutional features, like they are public, for-profit and non-profit elderly care homes we could look at and differences. So that's kind of the motivation how that study came into being. And very shortly, we found actually evidence for discrimination in the for-profit sector, not in the public and not in the non-profit sector. Um, yeah. It's very exciting work. Um, and it also, I think, is work that would be of great interest to our students and have lots of implications to our students. So 
it brings me to kind of this question of, you know, in this world that we have, in the world that we're living in right now, where there are so many challenges and where government and the nonprofit and for-profit sector are being asked to kind of innovate and pivot and respond to kind of un all these unexpected um, issues. And we're challenged at McCourt to really train, provide future leaders with the kind of rigorous training and ethical grounding that they need to go out and make the world a better place. What makes you, you know, both excited or, or feel challenged? Um, how do you think about how your experience, your research will inform what you're going to teach our students? In a recent kind of situation of stress and, and anxiety, yep. Yep. Of, it, is, it, is, it is kind of probably human nature to jump to try to do something, but I think kind of um, um, training students would take a step back for a second, use analytical skills, um, to really come at good conclusions where they are and go beyond one discipline or one field. Um, um, yeah, that's something. Also, I have to add, I kind of, I do not strongly believe in disciplines. I think there's the social sciences in, in a way with a lot of kind of epistemological communities within it. And I think that's something I want to, I think, especially for public policy students to understand their boundaries and us, especially these problems we are facing today. That's probably a key. Um I also just want to just take a second. You're coming to us after a full year at a, a place that should be close to the heart of McCourt, right? The Office of Evaluation Sciences. Um, so you've spent a year kind of embedded in this government agency. What have you learned from your government service and how will that inform your research and your teaching? Yeah, thank you. That's a good question. Just just for everybody who doesn't know the OES, so OES is a team of behavioral sciences who runs applied behavioral trials within government. They grew out of the, the White House social and behavioral science team and have done more than 70 trials to date. It's kind of the US nudge unit, um, so to speak. And yeah, well, I think like I've, I've learned more general lessons. I've, I've learned also very practical skills, but I just mean I've learned more general lessons there. And kind of the one thing that struck for me is how deep, so in, in public management, there is that concept that is also kind of used by labor economists of public service motivation. And I always had, to, to my own shame, a rather cynical view of it. I thought it's kind of that, it's, it's, it's rather academic, concept but I, I thought kind of um, rational choice type explanation are much stronger in explaining why people work for government um, um, right it's job security and, and things like things like that um, it's only my own experience so I didn't do systematic research on that but I experienced deeply poor socially um, motivated individuals um, there who want the want to make the life of others better um, and could have better paid jobs in the private sector and, and specifically choose to work in government. I find that deeply inspiring and motivating. It's great to work with this. With regard to teaching, I think kind of um, and what I've learned is how approachable people in government are, and especially like being in DC, it's so easy to get somebody in the class to talk with students. On a meta level, the type of advice that I've received throughout my undergrad and grad studies is, know what you want but be open for new things ah. um, um, it mm -hmm. sounds a little bit contradictory but um I, I i think it's important to have a have a direction but not to be fixated on that direction and be open to explore other things as um, even if it doesn't fit your interest so if you're really interested in coding and and data and public policy it's, it's not a problem like they like these two fit together really really well and you could study the one and then you could study the other you could also study the other, uh, and there exists a master for that but um yeah that would be the type of advice have a rough idea but don't be afraid to go outside your comfort zone and try something try something new well thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me um, we are so pleased to have you be part of the McCourt community and um, I look forward to all of us gathering in person. But in the meantime, it's great to have you as a virtual colleague. Yeah, thank, thank you, Maria. I'm thrilled as well to join and thanks for, for that lovely interview. Really appreciate it. Good.